Hi, today is July 5th and we're walking through the Bible answering the questions, who am I, who is God, and what the heck are we doing together? We are studying the One Year Bible, the New Living Translation, and my husband is walking with me through this journey and he enriches my understanding with his understanding and it's just so much more fun to walk together with somebody. So come along and walk with us. And I want to remind you that you have identity because of Genesis 1 27. We were created in God's image. Exodus chapter three says that God is who he is. I am that I am is what he said when Moses said, who are you? And if he is, I am capital letters, then, and we're created in his image then we are also, I am that I am. Paul said, I am that I am. And we just really don't think that's enough because we love to play the who's the greater game. And if I say I have the same identity as everyone else, what I'm saying is I have the same value. I'm, I'm the same as everyone else. And we like to be the greatest. And we play the comparison game and we... Uh, play play sports games and competitions and who's got the best wife, who's got the trophy husband, who's got the best car. And we just keep playing that who's the greatest. And sometimes it really does wear us out and it it's not satisfying. And what we need to understand is the value that God gave us is priceless because he gave his only begotten son for us and he Jesus Christ gave his life for us you can't get more valuable than that but if everyone is the same because God doesn't play favorites well then that who's the greatest game goes right out the window and what fun is that right but uh, we have to just really understand that's not the game that God is playing he is he's already given us great value and so July 5th, we're studying 1 Chronicles chapter 1. So we're leaving the first and second kings. We got to the end of the Chronicles of the Kings, but we're starting it again in a new book in a new way. So chapter 1 through verse 1, and then we, we're going to read until chapter 2, verse 17. Acts 23, 11 through 35, Psalm 3, 1 through 8. Proverbs 18, 14, and 15. Now, in the Old Testament, in 1 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 1, and chapter 2, verse 17, Chronicles is exactly what it says. It's a chronicle of the history of uh, the kings and Israel and Judah, and it starts with the begats. It starts with the uh, genealogy and it, the, the, you know, verse one, the descendants of Adam were Seth, Enosh, Kenan, and it goes down until Noah. And so we're talking about all of the people. One thing that I want to uh, pull out of this chapter is verse 19. Eber had two sons. The first was named Peleg, which means division for during his lifetime, the people of the world were divided into different language groups. And I'm trying to remember, but I believe it's Genesis chapter 11, I would say, is the account of the Tower of Babel, when God said, if they can talk to each other and they're united, there's nothing that they cannot do. So I'm going to divide the people by changing their languages. And so in a moment, no one could understand another uh, group because their language, they had a language barrier. So God divided the world because of language. And then as we go on, and it's just a list of names, just absolutely a list of names. And that's really important in the study. But as for what we are doing, all that I can tell you is that God is a creator and then he basically created man to recreate himself. And over and over and over again, there is a father who had a son. And, a, and then the son had another son. And 
uh, it just was exponential and the growth uh, filled the earth. And uh, this was the history of the Israel part of the earth. So we're going to talk about Paul in Acts chapter 23, verses 11 through 35. And that night the Lord appeared to Paul. Now remember, he has, he has been taken into custody and uh, the whole city is in an uproar. And God said to Paul, be encouraged, Paul. Just as you have been a witness to me here in Jerusalem, you must preach the good news in Rome as well. Now remember, he's not preaching to a friendly crowd. He is preaching to a mob who is rioting and who is at great risk of rioting. And they start to riot again after he speaks to them. It's not like they applaud him and sit down and say, whoa, that was a great sermon. So Paul really had to be confident in basically his relationship with God. And he had to be confident in who he was and that he knew what God had to say. And so here God is encouraging Paul. He's all alone, pretty effectively all alone, yet the Lord is encouraging him. Now, the next morning, a group of Jews got together and bound themselves with an oath not to eat or drink until they had killed Paul. They were, there were more than 40 of them in this conspiracy. So they went to the priests and the elders and they said, okay, here's the plan. And your part of this plan is to ask the commander to bring Paul back and uh, we're going to try him again. And when he is being transported from the prison to the courthouse, that's when we'll get, we'll kill him. But here's a, here's that three letter word that changes everything 180 degrees. Paul's nephew, his sister's son, heard of their plan and went to the fortress and told Paul. Paul called for one of the Roman officers and said, take this young man to the commander. He has something important to tell him. So the nephew told the commander what the plan was. The commander believed him and came up with a plan to save Paul, the Roman citizen. And he said to the nephew, don't let anyone know that you told me this. And then he got him safely to Governor Felix. And then he wrote this letter to the governor. He said, I took this man. They were, uh, the Jewish people were, were about to kill him when I arrived with the troops and I learned he was a Roman citizen. And that meant he had the protection of the Roman government. Isn't that neat? Like yesterday, we talked about us being citizens of the kingdom of heaven if we are citizens of the kingdom of heaven because we have been reborn into the Father's kingdom, then we have the protection of the, the kingdom. We have the protection of uh, all that the government in, of the kingdom has to offer. And uh, they have, you know, many, many times God is described as the captain of the host of heaven's armies. And so... He said, I am immediately sent him on to you. I have told his accusers to bring their charges before you. And so that night uh, they took Paul and got him to a safe place. And Psalm 3, 1 through 8, it says, um, this is a psalm, the head of this, the heading of it is a psalm of David regarding the time David fled from his son Absalom. Now, if you're not familiar with that, Absalom, his son, was um, very upset with, with David, and he was trying to usurp the kingdom, and he was, um, basically, he would have killed his father if he had found him. And verse 1 says, O Lord, I have so many enemies, so many are against me. So many are saying God will never rescue him. And so I'm going to talk about the bounce policy. They teach men, especially, but anyone who is tempted sexually to bounce their eyes. So if there's something appealing and perhaps uh, tempting, then, you know, you see it, but quickly bounce your eyes and don't look at it. So any temptation at all that anyone is, is struggling with. 
you want to um, bounce very quickly. And this is what David did. He said, this is the situation, but bounce. Oh, Lord, you are a shield around me. You are my glory. The one who holds my head high. That's our relationship. He and God is our shield and our glory. I cried out to the Lord and he answered me from his holy mountain. I lay down and slept, yet I woke up in safety for the Lord was watching over me. So he didn't have to stay up all night and worry about his um, his safety. He slept and when he woke up, the Lord had looked out uh, after him and he had saved him and protected him. And verse 7, Arise, O Lord, rescue me from Rescue me, my God. Slap all my enemies in the face. Shatter the teeth of the wicked. Victory comes from you, O Lord. May you bless your people. And then Proverbs chapter 18, verses 14 and 15. The human spirit can endure a sick body, but who can bear a crushed spirit? Intelligent people are always ready to learn. Their ears are open for knowledge. And so let's be intelligent. Let's have open ears, open eyes, and an open heart for understanding. And help us to understand and love the Lord with all of our hearts. So I want you to share these videos so God's word may be heard. Have an absolutely blessed day.